Hello, hackers. Welcome to the last lecture in the Pwn College reversing module. Today, we're going to talk about examples of reverse engineering in the real world, um, hopefully in a way that speaks to you. Imagine you are um, a developer back in the early, early days, let's say before the Internet, um, back in, in the early Stone Ages. Um, Software couldn't rely on internet access, right? Big no-no. Um, so how does the software ensure that it wasn't pirated? How do developers make sure that they're being paid for their um, efforts? Well, uh, there were a number of ideas that people came up with. One of the ideas was, you know, cleverly modified physical media. So um, uncopyable floppies or floppies that uh, when they were copied, the program could detect it based on a careful reading of the floppies. There's actually a amazing amount of very cool um, techniques that people came up with. But one of these techniques was um, a very straightforward thing called a license key check, right? A developer would implement a secret algorithm that would generate um, a number or that would verify some long number and return yes or no. Um, the developer ideally would have a way to generate a lot of valid numbers, um, whereas potential pirates wouldn't be able to generate valid numbers. Um, and when the developer sells the software, they would include a sticker with the CD key on the CD and um, the software would only be installable by purchasers, right? An interesting thing about this method that and and this is kind of the the key takeaway in reverse engineering is this method and many other um development practices trust the binary itself to keep algorithms and data safe inside itself this is not the case um a reverse engineer can pry open that binary and get to the juicy secrets within cool Let's talk about how that happens. Um, alongside these license keys, uh, a phenomenon happened in that hackers, uh, reverse engineers, pirates, people that 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 um, wanted to copy this software, uh, created key gens. And key gens was basically the process of reverse engineering the algorithm to understand and create valid license keys that would uh, be accepted by the software, even though it was copied. This, excuse me, this wasn't just, you know, a, let's say job for people, uh, an illicit job. This was an art and a passion similar to other uh, communities like the graphics demo scene, things like that. People took pride in their work. So this is um, a number of different key gens that I, have uh, had exposure to in my life as a uh, poor kid growing up in the 90s. Um, and they're, as you can see, way more artistic than they need to be, right? They're uh, um, very interesting uh, UI design. You, you, this one is totally custom looks like a custom ui library the one the first one to appear custom ui library um it's just a very interesting set of uh, kind of examples of people creating software that is on the face of it a hacking tool in some sense a cracking tool for this software uh such as windows 7 or um you know whatever this this supports a whole lot of different pieces of software. Um, uh, on the face of it, you don't need to go this crazy to create a work of art in some sense, but people do because people took pride in this, which is a an, an, an crazy uh, concept. Um, here's a, an interesting uh, example, a key gen for something called uh, Nero Burning ROM. The graphics on it aren't that um, impressive, although this group Orion uh, made a logo and everything. But if you click here, um, if I click here, you see there's a, a, a soundtrack that comes along with this. 
this key generator came with a soundtrack for no reason. Except for people had pride in this and uh, wanted to, to ship something cool, not just a key generator. All right, let's uh, put an end to that. That's pretty interesting, right? So all these hackers, they reverse engineered not just to pirate, but out of passion, which is pretty cool. Um, all right, the simple examples that you will um, uh, work through in this uh, assignment and this module are called uh, crack me's in the hacking world, right? Crack me's are small programs that are designed to test your reversing skills. Um, and they're inspired by these real world license key verification systems. Uh, for every crack me, you'll get um, the executable, you'll disassemble it, you can decompile it if you want to, you will look at the algorithm, think very hard, and eventually understand. All right, so this is one um, genre of, of hacking challenge. Um, and of course, uh, as many things in, in cybersecurity, these are kind of um, uh, an ancient art that is not really any more used. Un uh, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on your vantage point, as internet access became ubiquitous, um, and server side checks became possible, uh, key genning became inviolable, right? You can't generate a key where the check is only ever performed at, on the server, right? Um, this was a big known problem for online games, for example, um, in terms of, of piracy, online games are typically fairly safe actually against piracy because of this. Um, and so alternatives uh, started coming out and, and um, one of these alternatives is you reverse engineer the, the software until you truly understand how that uh, license check works and then you simply patch it out, you disable it, you replace that part of the code with no ops. Of course, you have to understand it quite clearly um, or the uh, other option that I highly recommend everyone doing because the developers of the software are, you know, trying to make a living to be able to bring you more awesome software is, is just buy the software. Um, all right. So that's one alternative, right? Uh, one other application of reverse engineering is patching um, of the program. Um, and the, this digital rights management, this copy protection um uh, field moved to try to fight against this. So um, to try to fight reverse engineering in general, um, there is uh, techniques have have come in that try to obfuscate the whole program. These are used, aren't used for certain things, are used for others. Um, obfuscating the whole program usually has um, uh, performance impact. And by obfuscating, I mean, rewriting the binary code in such a way that it's impossible to understand. And you um, modified your shell code quite a bit in the shell coding module to get around various crazy situations, uh, crazy filters, and that shell code became probably very hard to read at some points. So imagine doing that to an entire program and then trying to reverse engineer it. Um, in the same way, um, people have uh, created anti-debugging techniques to fight dynamic analysis, uh, techniques that monitor a program, and make sure it is not being messed with by a, a, a debugger or is not running inside some sort of emulator that could uh, retrieve knowledge out of the program. Uh, an interesting technique that has been developed is um, the wrapping of sensitive code in a virtual machine. So um, uh, digital right management purveyors create custom architectures that they write emulators for and heavily protect those emulators with obfuscation, um, anti-debugging techniques and so forth. And inside that emulator in a custom architecture that only they know, they put the, the critical logic for the license key check or whatever, right? Um, and actually you will have to approach this in, in the, the um, practice problems as well. Um, and a recent uh, trend has been the movement of digital rights management outside of the CPU at all, right? Uh, into trusted execution environments that we all have in our phones and so forth that live outside of the CPU and can communicate with it. And we'll actually discuss later in the course how that is not necessarily the um, uh, perfect solution to that. All right. 
Another application of reverse engineering I'll talk about, the last one, is um, game modding. This is also a topic uh, near and dear to my heart, having grown up in the early era of Counter-Strike, um, one of the early, very, very successful game mods. Um, modders, when they hit the limits of what is was intended by the developer, they tend to go crazy. Like they, they start uh, modding the actual executable of the, the um, binary. There are many, many examples too that I'll point out. Um, one of them is the Skyrim script engine. It is a binary modification uh, library that loads itself alongside Skyrim and actually modifies parts of the Skyrim binary to enable additional functionality for mods. And a bunch of mods depend on it. Um, and it's kind of crazy in the documentations for this uh, Skyrim script engine. Uh, it says, do not update Skyrim until you've made sure that we went and reverse engineered the new version of Skyrim and updated all of the memory offsets um, to put the, the, the hooks, uh, the, the breakpoints um, essentially in, in uh, better places, in, in the correct places on the new version. Because obviously when uh, the program is updated, the memory layout changes very slightly. Um, and uh, if you're uh, a fan of Dwarf Fortress, um, it's a really incredible game. Um, it also has one of these sort of binary level modding um, tools called DF Hack. Same sort of idea. When a new Dwarf Fortress comes out, DF Hack needs to update to uh, figure out where to properly hook execution um, uh, or to put in the breakpoints. To, to augment the game again. Um, the dark side of this is cheating, cheat engines in online games. Uh, they're basically a mod, right? You can imagine an aimbot, a uh, mod to a game that will use a routine running in a cheat engine to automatically aim your, your pistol in a first person shooter at the opponent, right? Um, and there is a war between cheaters and anti-cheaters uh, that takes place on this reverse engineering and code modding arena, which is a pretty uh, high stakes and very active area or right now of, of direct applied reverse engineering. Of course, other than this, reverse engineering is applied all over the place. Um, hackers, uh, security researchers, reverse engineer binary software all the time to try to find bugs. But these, uh, what I talked about right now, are just direct applications of almost reverse engineering for reverse engineering's sake, which is very cool. Um, throughout the rest of the course, you will be reverse engineering binary code to try to find bugs in it and exploit those bugs. But for now, take a moment and think about the vast world out there of reverse engineering applications, people playing these cat and mouse games with each other. It's pretty cool. Hope you enjoy the practice problems and I'll see you next module.